I, I've always been interested in wildlife. I, I can't remember a time when I wasn't interested in animals and birds. Birds are out, out of the, the animal groups, they're the most obvious animals to see. So even as a kid, you can see sparrows or pigeons wherever you are. So it's, it's kind of the first animal group you get into and it's just progressed from there. Um, I've lived in different parts of the world growing up and I've always been fascinated to see new birds, new species, wherever I've been living and it's just carried on throughout my life and my pastime has now become my occupation which is, is quite interesting. Hi there, I'm Dave Stanton, I'm a, an ecologist. Um, I work for a company called AEC Limited, so we're a professional consultancy um, who look at impacts to wildlife as a result of development. Um, as part of that, I'm a keen naturalist and, and along with that, I'm a, a bird watcher as well. So a lot of my work involves um, bird watching and, and studying different birds and their habitat uses. Normally you're not allowed to drive in here. Okay. Because we're doing research. So birding is slightly different to my job, where I'm a, uh, I'm a surveyor, but I got into my job through birding, which is a, a pastime, a hobby, where um, basically you just enjoy being outside, looking at birds, um, some people make lists, some people will twitch, which means looking for rare birds in different parts of the country or the world. Um, some people do what's called patch watching, which is just looking at what's local in that area and building up lists of birds. But essentially it's just having a, a passion and enjoyment of birds, wildlife, and, and just watching them, observing them um, wherever you are. I. Honestly, I don't remember how I got no. into birding um, because I don't remember a time that I wasn't. So my mum and dad always claimed that the very first word I said was sparrow <laughs> because I used to just sit and watch mm -hmm. the birds out of the window. So I, yeah, I don't remember not being into birding. Mm -hmm. But I had a grandmother who, well, I had a grandma before I was 10, but it was when I was about 10. She was a garden birder. She wasn't a serious birder, but oh. she put food out for the birds in her garden oh, okay. in Scotland. And she could identify most of the common, you know, garden oh. birds that she saw. And so she taught me a little bit. And my grandfather had an old pair of binoculars left over from when he was um, involved in the local home defence mm -hmm. during the Second World War and he lent me those and she bought me a bird book and then I realised that I could use these binoculars and I, instead of just seeing a little brown bird in the distance mm -hmm. I could, I could uh, identify it and then look in the book and work out what it was mm -hmm. and that's what really got me started um, as a bird watcher, recreational bird watcher. I mean as a kid I always used to like hobbies, I used to like collecting stuff and stamps and coins and model cars or whatever but bird watching was the same, you're collecting what, ticks, you know, new birds where you can tick it off your list and um, I think that's a huge part of bird watching as well, just there's a, there's a number of birds that you can see and you know it's nice to get the complete set almost, you know, it's a, it's a, <laughs> it's a funny old pastime in that respect. and check if there's anything in these nets. I'm in a, in a uh, weird situation where I'm, I'm paid to do stuff but I also still enjoy doing it off my own back. So along with birding, I do quite a lot of bird rigging. So we, we set net, nets in suitable habitats, catch birds and put 
bands on them, metal bands on the legs, so um, if they get caught elsewhere we know their migratory movements, but we also take biometric measurements to build up more information on these species. That, that ring number is unique, so we know that we've caught it before. We can put, we've got obviously a database with all the information on. There's a plain printer, tiny little bird. How heavy was this one, job? There you go, 8.7 grams, a tiny little bird. For all those similar species, we can build up a, a better um, set of data on, on identification, on migration, on movements. And even now we're working in collaboration with people that using the feathers, we can look at the DNA of these birds and, and help answer some taxonomic questions and identification issues that are out there. So it's from what seems sort of a fairly standard geeky hobby <laughs> just just can snowball and cascade and and it branches off into all different directions so so yeah I mean for me as a hobby it's, it's great because there's just so many different pathways you can follow and it, it's kind of a, a big spider's web of, um, of knowledge and interest the identification of those tricky species is is that challenge and that's what you're looking to do also when you're out in the field Two different species may have looked the same but have slightly different calls, so you're also listening all the time. This is a different species, this is called a dusky warbler. It's one of the most common migrant birds we get here. Um, again. This is a different species. Different species, yeah. This is called a dusky warbler. <laughs> she can't say that. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. I, can't, I really can't tell the difference. What, what's, what would... Um, we've got one here, so we'll uh, put them side okay. by side. Um, the hobby of bird watching, as I said before, it's just a huge web, and you, you just build a certain, uh, a huge amount of other knowledge on top of that. You know, it's not just there's a bird, great, tick that off the list. You, you'll be looking at, you know, oh, there's a bird there, but it's it's on the edge of this habitat inf interface. That's obviously important for it, and I wonder why that is. And you know, historically, I wonder why that habitat was created like that. And it, you know, it just cascades, and you get it's almost like a, opening an encyclopedia and just or getting lost on YouTube. You know, where you, your path you start off looking for one thing, and all of a sudden you you end up somewhere else. The colour, yeah. yeah. It's like tail length as well. Mm -hmm. Very different. Yeah. These are very long tailed, these. Mm -hmm. And very short winged. So. There's a certain amount of good headspace I get from it, I guess. So when I'm out birding, I can just focus on that objective. So I'm not thinking of other things or other distractions in the world. It's, it's almost like a bit of mindfulness or meditation. Um, yeah, we'll let them go now.